Hello, and welcome back to the Film Posers YouTube channel. My name is Josie, and I am accompanied by my lovely co-host, Gabriela, Juan, and Anna. And we are going to be talking about Cherry, or as we like to call it, Churk. Before Gabriela explains why we call it Churk, <laughs> this episode or this review is moderated by Juan Mojica. So, for those of you who don't know the reason why, we call it Cherk basically when the first poster for this film was released last year in 2020, it was misprinted. So it was published in Variety, if I'm not mistaken. And the poster didn't say Cherry. It said Cherk because there were like these lines that basically cut the letters that made it look like it said Cherk. And it was this whole thing. And since from that moment, obviously they fixed it. And now when the poster says cherry, but you can still find the Chirk poster. Like that's a rare collector's item. <laughs> and from that moment on, we decided to call it Chirk. And so, yes, every time someone in the group chat says cherry, they are corrected to Chirk. So in this house, we are going to be reviewing Chirk. Who was in charge <laughs> of posting this? <laughs> Not an English major. Who had the bright idea of, like, oh, let's just post it. And he didn't even verify if it was like <laughs> the title right was file. correct or not. If, if it was the right file. <laughs> <laughs> That's embarrassing. Oh. But okay, moving on. <laughs> so anyway, release the chirk cut. <laughs> so Cherry or Chirk is about an army medic suffering from post-traumatic stress disorder and he becomes a serial bank robber after an addiction to drugs that puts him in debt. This movie is directed by Joe and Anthony Russo who gave us Captain America Winter Soldier, Captain America Civil War, Avengers Infinity War, Avengers Endgame. So this is their first directing gig after making the most successful film of all time, Endgame. And uh, let's just say, oh, how the mighty have fallen. So to start off our general reactions, we're gonna start with film poser Josie. Okay, so our general consensus is that Cherry or Chirk is messy. <laughs> it is um, very messy. The structure is a bit weird because it is difficult to adapt anything. It is not easy. And especially when you want to be loyal to the source material, but you, like not everything translates. So sometimes there are things you have to cut out. Sometimes there are things you have to add. And from what I've been reading is that it feels as though they try to cram everything into the film. And you kind of can tell because first of all, it's long and it didn't need to be that long. I think if you would have cut the runtime, it would have been a little bit more palpable, digestible, but they just try to do a lot at the same time. And at, at a certain point, it comes off as trying too hard. And it, despite, because the premise is promising. I mean, it's a story that has been told before, but you can keep telling in very new ways and still make it feel fresh and original. And I think that's what they were going for. But unfortunately, it gets lost along the way within the spectacle. And again, it just feels superficial, which is very upsetting. All right, so we're gonna continue this with Anna. Yeah, so I agree with Josie. That was my first thought of when I finished the film. I thought that they really did want it to be loyal. They wanted to put everything from the book, like adapted to the movie, but it just wasn't it. Again, it became messy. I thought that they didn't know how to define their style in the film. It's like there's different stuff going around and just didn't know what to do with it, um, especially with the cinematography. Some things were great, but other stuff they try to like experiment with the aspect ratio. Like every chapter, there's a different aspect ratio. And I was like, okay, but define what you're trying to do. However, I thought it was pretty entertaining for most of it. I know it's a two and a half hour long film. It had its moments, but then again, it's just, it's just a plain mess. I thought that the only redeemable thing of this movie is just Tom Holland. He exceeded on this movie with his acting and that's the only thing that was keeping it strong in this film. But nevertheless, it's just, it's messy. It didn't know how to get its message across. And yeah, it's an undefined style. It's clearly not for everyone and it's gonna be very divisive. Gabriela. 
Yeah, I agree. It's very, like Jesse said, messy. <laughs> and it's way too long. The two and a half hours. I get that you want to, you know, fit everything from the book to the movie. I get that. But, you know, there are things that could have easily been, you know, cut down or presented in a different way that would have made the runtime shorter. And to me, like, the real problem for me was that the message gets lost because the film tra is like overly violent, which, you know, I get you want to present the war and you want to criticize all of that, but there was actually no need for it to be that violent if you wanted to focus on the aftermath of the war. Like I get, you know, it's not that you can't show anything because obviously like war is horrible and it's, you know, a lot of people die in it, but there was no need to spend that much time focused on the violence of the war, I think you you could have focused more on like how he felt being there, which you could kind of see it, but it would have been much better if you focus on the emotional side of him being there rather than just like the violence. And as for the cinematography, it just basically feels like someone straight out of film school that was taught all of these different techniques of how to shoot and how to use cinematography and they just crammed it all in a film because you have like voiceover you have the aspect ratio changes which at one point got annoyed it's like why why is there a need to change so much aspect the aspect ratio so much like this isn't one division one division is allowed to do it not this movie and the how the film suddenly everything turned red and then like all of those shots, it looked like they were copying Barry Jenkins of the face shots. Like there was, it tried to be artsy, but it just got annoying because this film did not, like if you had stuck to one style, like let's just say you just wanted to do like those close up shots of the faces, then that's fine. Just stick to that. But doing that plus everything else, it was just annoying, honestly. You know, I just kept waiting to see what other shot are they going to try next it's like as if they couldn't decide <laughs> i feel that maybe they shot this movie in all the different styles and then in the editing room they just crammed all the different styles together <laughs> but yeah to me the message didn't get across even though i was kind of entertained for like the first half of it i was entertained and i liked where it was going but then it just goes down downhill really fast and yeah, the only redeemable part of it was Tom Holland. I, I thought he was great in the film. You know, he's a really good actor. He's already shown that he has, you know, the range to do like, these types of dramatic roles. So I really can't say anything bad about his performance. I think he was he did very well. But it's overall that the film just doesn't get the message across. And yeah, it's just messy. <laughs> Uh, what's interesting is you said this kind of felt like a film student making a movie and you're I feel like you're half there I feel like it's the film student who thought he was going to do amazing and then failed the class and because he delivered this I'm going to quote Alyssa Edwards and Bob the drag queen here and say mama this was garbage mama this is garbage oh. right here. I'm sorry it this was just um messy is the right word but so is garbage I thought there were so many problems in this film. For example, I didn't like how the Russo brothers portrayed women. I felt the way he portrayed Chiara Bravo and um, the other character we meet in the beginning, I thought it was uncomfortable. I thought it was weird. Like the depiction was just not it. When it comes to Tom Holland, he seems like a super nice person, like very likable. And he's in fact, very talented. Like Gabriela said, he's shown he has the range and he has a bright future ahead of him, but I would counsel him to maybe not feel bad for rejecting projects, you know, roles like this, because it's not that he couldn't do it. He did his best. He broke his back trying to carry this movie with Jimenez, but I think he was miscast. He didn't do a bad job. It's just, I would have gone with someone else in the role just because this film didn't meet the measure of what it wanted to do. And I wouldn't have wanted Tom Holland attached to it. And, you know, they're running an ad campaign for this movie for award season, which Oscars? No. Golden Raspberry Awards? Yes. That's where I see it's going. And it's unfortunate because it's not Tom Holland's fault. He's doing his best. Like, I, th there was just a lot wrong with it. I felt some parts were just generally unwatchable. 
there's a lot of toxic masculinity in the film, which, you know, choices. Jimenez deserves rights. As we all agreed in our group chat, we felt Jimenez is the one who deserved rights. The actor who played Jimenez, great job. He also has a bright future. I'd want to see him in more roles. I think the real problem is the script. It's just, it's, it was so disor. It was so messy, like Josie said, but it was also like really, really missed the mark in so many parts that could have been impactful, but it just felt empty and shallow. Like there was really nothing important that the film was saying because I didn't get any of the messages. And for two and a half hours, I expect at least one message to go through. So I thought the film had better advertisement than execution. This was hard for me to sit through. I could not wait for it to be over. I think it's too long. And honestly, I haven't seen actors struggle so much with a director, you know, just recording it since Jared Leto and Suicide Squad. This was just unfortunate. And I think it's safe to say that Cherry fizzled out like an actual cherry bomb. And for Tom Holland stands, um, I wouldn't worry. He's going to be just fine. You know, he still has Spider-Man. He has Nathan Drake in the upcoming Uncharted. He has Chaos Walking, which I'm worried about. But, you know, he ha he's going to get booked. He's fine. But I wouldn't do these roles unless the film, you know, is going to be good. And with that, I think we can conclude our review of Cherry. And our general reaction is, eh. I mean, if you want to check it out, it'll be in select theaters February 25th. Check your local listings. And on Apple TV Plus on March 12th, if you're really interested in watching it, go ahead. I wouldn't, but you know, up to you. Yeah, like form your own opinion. Like this yeah. is just our yeah. personal opinion. But if you want to watch it, like you're totally free to do so. Again, this was just our personal opinions. But yeah, it's like Juan mentioned, it's going to be a very divisive film because overall, all of the first re reviews that have been coming out, most of them have been negative and there have only been a few that have been like, you know, it wasn't that bad. But I've yet to see a review and, you know, a glowing review of this film. So again, you're free to watch this film and form your own thoughts on it. Maybe you will enjoy it and that's great. Yeah, honestly, if you want to check it out, check it out for Tom Holland, because after this movie, he definitely needs to go to a chiropractor. So. Very that. <laughs> the best one. Yeah, honestly, form your own opinion. This is just our opinion. And that's all for this review. Thank you for checking it out. Please like and subscribe. And remember to follow us at Film Posers on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, TikTok. You know what to do. And of course... Always remember, we're all film posers. Bye. 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 Bye.